je suis désolé, mais j'ai euh, un peu euh, prévu de parler en anglais et je suis plus à l'aise en anglais. So J'espère que ça ne gêne pas trop, mais n'hésite pas à poser des questions en français après. Et je vais essayer de parler assez clairement. Uh, so, so, what, what's the challenge? So, well, firstly, what is CFM? CFM, uh, we're an investment manager. Uh, we're located not very far from here. Um, plus, plus proche? Okay. So, who is CFM? We're an investment manager. We're located not very far from here. We have about 300 or so uh, staff. Um, and uh, we have a very, let's say, collegiate atmosphere. A lot of people from different backgrounds, different nationalities. For example, this is why I'm speaking in English. Um, and we're very much, uh, how do I say, collaborative, and we do like to keep in touch with what's going on in, uh, in science. We like to publish, we like to stay active in research. And so we're also very, very interested in staying close to what's happening, current trends in, in machine learning, for example. So because of that, we've been active in the Data Challenge now for, for quite a number of years. Okay, so um, I'm going to explain the data set. Um, so one of the problems that we uh, have uh, in, in our business is, is the problem of execution, right? So being an investment manager, it's not just uh, taking positions in, 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 in stocks and holding them or, or whatever it might be. Uh, but we, we, we also do our own execution. And a lot of investment managers don't do this, but we, we focus on that in one of our teams. And uh, what does that mean? That means the nitty gritty of going to the exchange and sending orders and trying to get the best price for the trade that you want to do. And so what does um, uh, the exchange look like at the very finest detail, at the most uh, fine grained level? Well, most of the exchanges uh, in which we trade um, assets, let's say, uh, are, are managed through something called an order book. And uh, it, it basically looks like this. Uh, and it, you can send an order to, to say, buy, uh, let's say, a stock at a particular price. Uh, in this case, you might send an order to, to buy at uh, the price of 99, OK? And what will happen is it goes into a queue, OK? And it goes to the back of the queue at the price of 99. And uh, it'll just stay in the book waiting to be executed unless somebody out there decides, I want to sell at 99. And then what happens, it'll be eventually executed, you'll have a trade, there'll be a buyer and a seller, both at the price of 99. Um, but what happens is uh, people want to buy at the lower price, and they want to sell at the higher price. So people like to place these patient orders, hoping that somebody else will send the so-called market order instead. So you have this concept of a limit order, it goes in the book at a price, goes into a queue, and then you wait until eventually it's executed. So for example, somebody executes some of the orders that are in front of you in the queue at 99. The queue depletes. You are still at the back of the queue. Somebody else decides they also want to buy at 99. Uh, there's now more shares behind you in the queue. Uh, somebody then decides, I will sell at 99. You get uh, the people in front of you be traded, and eventually you get traded. And, and this is how it works. So you can be uh, patient, you can place your orders in the queue, and you can wait until somebody decides to send a so-called market order. And so what is a market order? Well, conceptually, uh, the simplest way to say it is it's a decision to trade against one of the limit orders that is already resting in the book by one of these patient actors. And when you send a market order, you will be executed immediately at the price that you want to trade at, or at least the lowest price, for example, if you want to buy, and the highest price if you want to sell. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. So you will see in the data set all the information about what, when people place an order in the book, at what price they place an order, and then you will also see in the, in the, in the data when a trade occurs and at what price. And um, that's probably the, the simplest explanation I can give at a high level of the data set. Uh, and so this is the nitty gritty. This is the details, I don't know, explosion of what the data set looks like. And uh, yeah, it's a very detailed slide, but it's, 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 it's useful reference. So you have, um, I don't know, about what, 10 columns, okay? 
You have, uh, crucially, the price at which every event takes place. And uh, to make the challenge uh, more difficult, I have removed the price, okay? So normally, on each stock, there would be a different bid price and a different ask price. So I forgot to say, the, the highest buy, the highest uh, level on the left side, 99, is the bid. It's the best bid. And the lowest on the, on the right side is the ask, the best ask. So when you see here, we're talking the bid and the ask, we're talking about the prices of the two best quotes. And what that means is if you want to buy immediately, you will buy at 100 if you send a market order. You will get a worse price than 99 because you were not patient. And if you want to sell immediately, you'll get the, uh, the so-called bid price of 99. And so to make the challenge more difficult, I've removed the price, right? Otherwise, uh, you, you'll see later that the, the, the problem is to work out which stock we're talking about. It's a classification problem. I will give you a piece of data set from this order book, and you'll have to decide, is it Microsoft? Is it Apple? Which stock is it? And if I give you the price, then it becomes very easy because you will know that the price of Apple is $1,022 or, or whatever it might be, and it'll become very easy to identify that it's Apple later based on the price. So the price is removed. So the first bid price in all of the data sets is always zero, and then the ask price is, is in some sense, is, is correct relative to the bid. So in this particular case, you can see that the bid price is zero, but the ask price is three cents higher, okay? So this is not an accurate picture. Uh, you would not see whole dollar increments between the prices of the order book. Usually it would just be a cent, right? So you can imagine each of these levels on, on US stocks is always about a cent for large liquid stocks. Uh, and so what other information you have is the bid size and the ask size. So this is the amount of shares that are present in the two levels at the bid and the ask, the two best bid and ask levels. Um, and then you have the action that takes place, okay? So the action can either be you place an order or you will, uh, do I have a laser on this or, I'm not sure. Uh, you can either place an order or you can cancel an order uh, or you can even update an order. So that gives rise to, uh, that gives rise to uh, three different possibilities, A, D, or U. So if you place an order, it's an A. If you delete an order, it's a D. Uh, in other words, cancel an order, okay? Because you, you, you can choose later to always cancel the order. You can put it in the order book, and then you can cancel it later. And then you have uh, U. And sometimes, if, if a trade occurs, well, that means that somebody has removed your order from the order book and caused a trade. And that will also be represented as, as a D. But at the same time, you will see a flag here to tell you that it wasn't a cancellation. It wasn't you deciding that you no longer want your order in the book. It's because you were deleted because somebody else sent a market order and then traded against you. I hope that's clear. Um, and finally, uh, it's a little bit of complexity here, but on US stock markets, there are um, often a number of different exchanges that are trading the same instrument, the same stock. And so the order book that we're talking about is not a singular order book on a single exchange, but it's an aggregate order book. It's a sum over about five or six different order books on different exchanges. And this gives rise to, to one more um, field, which is the venue, which is telling you on which one of the venues from which we build the aggregated order book did that particular event take place. And then you've got this order ID. And this is, this is what makes this data level three, very, very detailed information on the order book. Because anytime an event occurs, like you place an order or you delete it, there's a unique identifier that tells you that it was the same order that you would have seen earlier in, 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 the, in the feed of data. So for example, here you see an order is placed, but then later it is deleted. And you know it's the same order because it has the same order ID zero. Uh, and then uh, the flux is just telling you it's, it's just uh, the change to the level. 
So you will see that a flux is always caused by deletion of a volume. And when you add an order to the book, it creates an increase in volume. So for example, if you added an order to the bid, you would see a flux probably of maybe 100. And then in the next line, you would see that the bid, at, uh, the bid size would have increased. And uh, I think that mostly explains all of the data. Just be aware that it's not perfect. And there are some situations here that I've shown where, in fact, um, uh, in fact, no, I didn't show it actually, but it's, it can be possible that uh, an order might appear to be deleted before it was even added to the order book because the events were picked up in the wrong order. So there might be now and again a strange uh, problem like this, but I don't guarantee that the data is 100% perfect in how we received it and collected it and recorded it. And finally, uh, events can occur anywhere in the order book. So most people will place orders close to the best bid and the best ask because it makes it more likely that they're going to buy or sell or be traded. But it's very possible that an order will be placed somewhere deep in the order book, far away, that will probably never be executed. And that information is, is still recorded. So for example, this order here was placed on the bid side of the book, right, the left side, at a price that was 912 ticks, 912 levels away from the best bid. Um, and I think that's, that's everything I can say. So in terms of what is X and what is Y, what is the, the particular task at hand? Well, for each X, let's say, we have 100 of these events occurring in sequence. It's a small snapshot in time of what happened on one of these exchanges. And you'll have 100 values, so 100 of these rows. And then that will correspond to that particular observation. And then the Y for this set of 100 events will be the label of that stock that you have to identify. Uh, which, is, which is what I've shown here. So, for example, you have uh, about, I think in the training set, maybe about 160,000 of these moments from different order books on different stocks. And for each one of these uh, tables of data that occurred over 100 events, you simply need to decide uh, which stock it is. Uh, and there are 24 possible stocks. So it's a classification task. It's uh, something you would put a soft max on at the end. It also means that the loss, the target, the score that you want to, to maximize uh, to, to, to win is going to be uh, simply the, the, the classification accuracy. Uh, that means the, the probability or the, the frequency with which you guess correctly the stock in the out of sample test data set. And I think that's as much as I can remember to say. Uh, so don't hesitate if you have more questions uh, or don't hesitate to send an email to, to me during the course of the challenge if you have some particular questions. And yeah, good luck. Yes, the classes there is a uh, yeah, you'll see this in the, in the training set, that there is an equal number of observations drawn per day, per stock, for all stocks. And I didn't say this, but uh, the training set is drawn from like a particular period of time, like a set of months. And then the test set is drawn from another time in the future. So they're completely separated in time. Yeah. Uh, so that, yes, so this is something I did consider to put in time because in the real exchange data, you will know the time delta, the difference in time between each event that takes place. For example, some, there might be HFTs, right, high frequency traders who are sending orders very, very fast. And the difference in time between these events could be microseconds or it could be a stock for which there's not much 
things happening, and you might see seconds or minutes pass between events. I didn't show you this information. So you only have uh, the correct ordering of events up to, like the example that I thought I had in the slide, which was the case where there was definitely uh, a mistake that an event was deleted before it was uh, placed. And the reason for that is because these two messages probably arrived when we collected it very, very close in time, separated by microseconds. And, or maybe it was just an error in the processing, but for some reason these events were, were flipped over. But generally speaking, uh, the temporal order of things, the time order, is correct. Uh, yes, uh, question. Oh, uh, yeah. Good question. Yeah, no, for, for us it's, it's not... Uh, good, that's a very good question. I mean, yes, it, it doesn't necessarily help in terms of uh, our end goal to be able to predict that a particular stock is that stock. Uh, but what is interesting is the approaches that it will, it will provoke in terms of trying to, to build that. So the same model that you choose to classify a particular uh, stock is going to be one that understands and that can interpret the dynamics of what's happening in that exchange. And uh, you, you know there's, there's, there's plenty of uh, scope for transfer learning. If you can build a model that can very well classify a stock, you can likely build a, a model that can very well detect what is happening inside that piece of data. Like, is there a particular agent at play who's making a trade that you can detect? And so whatever model I can imagine that a good participant can, can use to classify a stock is likely one that can be repurposed to do something particular, you know, potentially more interesting. Uh, so the bet is on, let's say, universality and uh, transfer learning.